o'clock, so let's call this meeting to order. This is the June 21st meeting of the Finance Committee. Can we have the roll call, please, Bill? Yep, can I roll? Here. Ramsey? Here. Olson? Here. And Kuhn is not present, but expected to join us. Okay, and we do have a quorum, so we'll move on. Um, approval of the minutes is our first item of business. Uh, anyone want to make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 7, 2022 Finance Committee meeting? I'll move to approve. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of the June 7, 2022 Finance Committee meeting signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Next, we move on to the audit of bills. Um, Bill Burns, do you have any items to update us on? Uh, nope, no updates or additions tonight, just what you have before you. Okay, all right, and it has been circulated. Um, Alder Olson, did you receive it to sign? Yeah, I put it on, and if Emily comes, I wanna make sure she... Okay, great, thank you. All right, well, can I have a motion to approve the audit of the bills? Motion to approve the audit of the bills. Thank you. I'll second that. All the, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The bills are, the audit is approved. Next, we move on to our presentations. We have two tonight. Uh, we're going to start with a presentation and acceptance of the city's 2021 annual comprehensive financial report. And I see that we have received copies. Thank you very much for the, the copy. And we have uh, two members of, of the audit team. Uh, the two partners are in our audit, uh, Andrea Jansen and Jody Dobson, and they're going to be providing an overview and available to answer questions. Welcome, Thank Andrea and Jody. Thank you. Um, like Bill said, I'm Andrea Jansen, and I'm a partner on the city side of the audit. Um, Jody is on the utility side of the audit. Um, appreciate your time this evening. I do want to make a couple of high-level comments before we move into the financial highlights um, that Bill has up on the screen. Um, first, as I'm sure you're aware, the city issues an annual comprehensive financial report, which is um, a lengthy document, but it's, it's, it's more than just your basic financial statements that we're required to issue. Um, it does include a statistical section in the back and an introductory section in the front. Um, which are in line with the GFOA um, award program. And the city received its third um, consecutive award for the 2020 report from GFOA, and will be submitting the 2021 report um, for the fourth um, consecutive award, hopefully. There were no new accounting standards to implement in 2021. Um, there were some new auditing standards, which resulted in some changes to the um, opinion that we provide um, in the front half of the section. Really no changes to the grade, if you will, of the opinion. We were able to issue an unmodified opinion, which is the highest level of assurance that we're able to give. So just some reordering of the information and a little bit of additional information on the responsibilities um, over the financial statements. The reporting and insights um, from 2021 audit is your other formal document that came along with the audit. Um, wasn't planning to cover that in detail, but I'm certainly able to dig in if there are sections that um, you'd like to have me explain more. Um, it, it contains a lot of required communications and um, really a similar format or flow since last year. So um, again, happy to walk through any of that in detail. The internal control matters do start on page six of that document. Um, and as a reminder, you're not required to fix those items. Um, they're just matters that we noted during our audit, so we're required to communicate those to you. Um, and the last comment on that report is, is the very last section of the report is two-way communication. Um, and this is really a forward-looking section to the 2022 audit. So if there are matters that you become aware of during the year um, that you feel like are worth our attention, um, definitely feel free to reach out at any time during the year and, and we're happy to have a discussion. Um, all of the contact information for our audit teams um, are within this report as well. So then moving into the financial highlights, on page one, thank you, um, is really focused on your general fund. So as you know, that's your primary mm -hmm. operating fund um, for the city, and this is focused on your fund balance or your equity, so what's left over um, your assets less your liabilities. 
And the top line here, we've got your total fund balance of about 11.2 million at the end of the year. Um, that's up slightly from last year. And then we've got the fund balance by categories below that. So the very bottom category is where I want to start. That's your non-spendable fund balance. So items that are really not in spendable form, just as it sounds. The decrease there um, relates to the payback of the advance um, from the general fund to the golf course. Um, and then the assigned fund balance as we move up is funds that you have earmarked for specific purposes, about $4 million at the end of the year, primarily for compensated absences, um, a couple different public safety categories, and the details of those um, are on page 40 of the financial statements. And then lastly, the unassigned fund balance of about $6.7 million at the end of the year. That is um, really your reserves. It's not earmarked for any specific purpose um, and is available for spending. So then just a quick note on the summarized income statement there below the chart. Um, this is really how we got that change in fund balance in your total line. You can see your actual revenues and other financing sources exceeded the expenditures and other financing uses by um, just under $100,000 this year. And you can compare that to the middle column, which was your final budgeted um, amounts and you were expecting a net loss of about 1.46 million so your actual results are, are much better than planned and the details of all of those start on page 52 of the financial statements so moving oh you yeah. mind if I just make a real brief comment yes. I, I just um, wanted to comment on, on why the budget number is reflected that way and, and there are two things that we have mm -hmm. budgeted that we really um, we're not intending to have to spend in less than an emergency. And one of those is our actual emergency contingency of 500,000. The other was a potential transfer to the capital projects fund from some of the capital reserves. In large part, those items are in the budget because of the expenditure restraint program uh, purposes. And we want to keep our base for that program up there. Um, but outside of an emergency, we wouldn't plan on using that emergency contingency. And as you recall, those that have been on the council long enough, we did use that one year following the flooding in 2018. But in most years, that item is never authorized to be spent and not, not incurred. Thank you. So, well, just one quick question. So, uh, our, if you look at the final budget, so we spent less than what we were thinking about. So, what is that where we saved or did not spend 1.4 or 1.6 million? So, so most of that, the largest two components of that are, are what I was just referring to, the, mm. the emergency contingency, which was budgeted and unspent. And then we also had a potential um, transfer to the capital projects fund for some of the, the public safety reserves if we needed to do that for future years for expenditure restraint program purposes. Okay. We didn't need to do either of those. Okay, okay, thank you. So then moving on to page two, we are still talking about the general fund here and we're still talking about fund balance, but we're really focusing in on that um, unassigned fund balance piece. And we're comparing it in this chart to your 2022 budgeted expenditures, um, which is in line with, with how your policy has your, um, with how your fund balance policy is lined out. So you can see that the, the black line and the orange line on the chart are the minimum and maximum of your policy. The green line is your actual. So your calculated percentage of that ratio is 31% this year. Um, you've got a nice four year trend of, of improving, um, that ratio improving over the last four years. And then we also have some comparative metrics here at the blue dots, but I do wanna point out that those also include the assigned fund balance component. So that is why they look higher than um, what we've got here for the green line. If you wanted to compare the city's values to those um, comparative values, you'd have to add back that uh, $4.1 million assigned fund balance from page one. So those all look very healthy. And now on page three, we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about the general obligation debt of the city. And this chart is comparing your actual, your actual general obligation debt on the green line at the bottom of the chart to the state statutory limit, um, which is the 5% of your equalized value, and that is the black line, um, which is increasing nicely at the top. And then your um, policy limit here 
is 66.6% of that um, state statutory limit, which we do not have that mapped out on the chart here, but I think I calculated the value around 141 million um, at the end of 1231-21. So well within your policy, well within state statutory limits, um, certainly room to borrow should you need to. And then below that chart, we've got just a, another breakdown of what um, is included in your long-term obligations. You've got general obligation debt that all relates to the city. Um, there's no revenue debt for the utility. And then we've got um, some additional figures in there for compensated absence in, um, balances, your sick and vacation type liabilities. That's about 3.8 million. That does not factor into the state statutory debt limit calculation. And then if you're interested in additional metrics and data, um, the link there will take you to Wisconsin Policy Forum. And there's just a whole host of other data out there you can compare to specific municipalities or across your county, um, all kinds of information. And the last thing that I was going to cover um, before I pass it over to Jody, we're still talking about governmental funds, we're still talking about debt here, but instead of looking at how much debt is outstanding, we're looking at how much you're spending in debt. So your principal and interest um, paid by the governmental funds as a percentage of your non-capital expenditures. The reason we compare it to non-capital expenditures is because that capital expenditure can, can really make the ratio fluctuate, so we really try to get at what is your operating piece. So at the end of the year, that ratio is 17.4% down from the last couple of years. Um, you can see below the chart that you spent about $6.1 million on debt service this year compared to about $10.9 million last year. Um, and then we, again, we've got some comparative metrics. So you're certainly right in the comparative range with other municipalities of your population size. Um, and then I think even probably coming down from, from that in 2021. Thank you very much. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the water and sewer utilities. Um, these ut two utilities operate on a full accrual basis and charging a user fee for their services. So the metrics we look at are a little bit different. So starting with the water utility, the first item we have here is the rate of return, which is how the Public Service Commission at the state level um, establishes water rates. They oversee that process. And they design water rates where they are intended to recover your operating costs as well as a return on your investment and capital assets. So your current rates were designed to earn a 5.25% return on capital assets that were in service at that point in time. And we can see here for the last two years you've been earning um, a little bit below that, but it did increase for 2021 over 2020, um, so at a 3.65%. And that can be below the authorized for a couple of reasons. Um, the largest one that I often see is as you continue to invest in your infrastructure and put more money into that rate base, the amount you're trying to earn on is larger. And so your revenues um, it almost takes a rate reset to really recover that. But as we look at the chart below this, we can see that over the last five years, the water revenues have been relatively stable and actually increased in 2021. Um, and then we also have um, the operating expenses below that that have been relatively stable, a little decrease in 2020 and a back up in 2021, but right about the same level as 2019. So overall, those margins there have been very um, consistent which leads to the number that's below the chart. Um, one of the key items we look at for utilities is the unrestricted cash reserves on hand. And the recommendation here would be to have one billing cycle plus one year's capital so that you can keep paying the bills until you make the next set of collections because we provide service before we collect from our customers and also to have that um, funding on hand for your routine capital additions that you pay out of operations. So at the end of 2021, the water utility had just about 19 and a half months worth of cash on hand. So very strong position there. And again, as we look over the last five years, it's um, up and down a little bit, but been relatively stable. And the water utility, as mentioned previously, does not have any debt outstanding. So all of the capital infrastructure has been financed through earnings or the debt has been paid off if there was any. So moving on to the sewer utility, 
um, looking at the operating results, we see here that the revenues and expenses lines are a little bit closer. Um, the sewer utility really looks at more of a cash basis for how to set its rates, wanting to make sure it has the cash to pay for operating costs um, and routine capital outlay. So if depreciation, which is a non-cash expense, um, is greater than what that routine outlay is, it can be seen where the expenses on the gap basis would exceed revenues. Um, but they've stayed relatively close, and actually for 2021, the revenues did exceed the expenses. Um, as we look then at the cash reserves, um, if, as we see that where the revenues are very close to the expenses, the second question that I ask is, how are the cash reserves? Are we drawing down those reserves by not having enough revenue? And in fact, your cash reserves have been relatively stable, um, just been drawn down a little bit, but right at seven months worth at year end. Um, so definitely beyond, that's at least you know two quarters, over two quarters, so more than enough on the billing cycles. Um, and as long as that's providing for capital, um, which not having a, a wastewater treatment plant makes a big difference there. And again, the sewer utility does not have any debt outstanding, so there's not debt service needing to be recovered, which is another driver um, of being able to have that revenue and expense close together. So overall, the utilities um, are, have a strong position at year end, and I know management is proactively monitoring the rates to make sure that they stay in line. Yes? Can you just um, explain in like a sentence or two why in 2017 we had 1.6 million at the year end balance and it was seven months, I'm guessing that's months, mm -hmm. and then by 2021 it was 1.9, almost two, mm -hmm. and but it was 6.8. I'm guessing that's because of all the development. So that's how many months worth of operations. So if you look at the chart above, the operating revenues and expenses have both also gone up. So the costs per month have gone up. Okay. So part of that is the growth and development. Part of that is um, just expense inflationary increases, treatment charge increases as well. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions on any of the documents? Yes, so I have one question for you on page seven. Uh, it's about the utility billing, and you said there should be independent review of new rates entering into the system, that uh, the person who is entering and billing, there should be two separate people, or what are you saying? So <clears throat> this is when we look at um, the various accounting processes. One of the things we're looking for is complete segregation of duties where no one person does more than one step in a process. And I would say a very high percentage of the organizations that we work with um, are unable to have complete segregation of duties just due to the size of the organization and the staff, that it's not practical to have additional staff just to do one or two steps in order to completely segregate. So here is just something that we make you aware of um, for additional oversight. So my second question is you mentioned about the cash collection that's collected at four, three, four different places, uh, the city hall, golf course, senior center, and you feel okay with that or you want any changes or what? <clears throat> yeah, the decentralized cash collection point is is more of an informational point than necessarily something going wrong at the city um, because our audit is focused on making sure that we're issuing you know materially correct financial statements. While we do do walkthroughs of different departments or walkthroughs of, of key controls, there are definitely departments that we do not um, necessarily touch the controls based on the risks each year. So this is just making you aware that those might be areas of risk, probably not high dollars that we're talking about, but if something were to go wrong, it can still be a big, it can still be a big deal, you know, for management and for those charged with governance. So more of an informational point. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Any other questions for our presenters? And we will see you again at the council meeting, correct? No? No, we were just going to have them present at finance. Oh, okay. I thought I saw that on the council agenda. All right. Well, thank you very thank you much, so much, Andrea and Jody. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Yeah, we, we have an item on the, the council agenda for acceptance of the statement. So there, there could be a motion from finance committee to recommend acceptance and then the council would formally accept, but we were just gonna do the presentation at finance for time purposes. Okay, all right, well then do we want to entertain a motion now? To recommend to council, I'll make that motion. All right, we have a motion from Alder Ramsey to recommend the annual comprehensive acceptance financial report um, to council. Can I get a second? This is Emily, I'll second. Thank you, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, well I hope we'll get a fourth certificate um, award for this one. So thank you very much, Bill and all of finance for uh, working so hard to do an excellent job, you know, an award-winning job. Okay, let's move on then to the next presentation <coughs> from CXC Outdoor Sports and Recreation Center. Good evening, um, there's an item later on in the agenda that is an amendment to the approved lease with CXC and I wanted to take the opportunity to update both finance and council on this project, the progress to date and what's planned ahead. Um, if you wanna move ahead, Bill, um, just if you could stay on that slide before this one. Um, the photo on the left is the aerial image shows roughly where the CXC Outdoor Recreation Sports Center is. Um, just north of Pleasant View Golf Course, uh, between Pleasant View Golf Course and Highway 14. Um, as a refresher, this is eight acres of land that was donated by Dan and Natalie Erdman to the city of Middleton. Um, the city then executed a lease agreement with the Central Cross Country Ski Association to manage the eight acres and uh, also an easement that was provided by the Erdmans. You can see on the right, kind of the, the overall dream depiction of the facility um, that shows the entrance road and initial parking lot that was constructed last fall, along with expanded parking, a future building site, and then a um, cross country ski course that's outlined there in green that will also double as uh, pedestrian walking paths during uh, the warm season. A little about the first year of operation. Uh, there were 76 days of groomed ski trail um, last winter. Uh, you can see the, the past numbers purchased. Um, all in all, a very successful first season. All of that done with a 15 stall parking lot. And a lot of you may have heard um, concerns and, and comments from users about the need for additional parking, which is why the amendment is on, on the agenda later this evening. Also to note, um, the first kind of event, uh, the state championship for um, the WNSL Sprint was held in the first weekend in February. And so as phase one is completed, we are working on phase two. Um, a little bit about kind of the key components of phase two. On the left, you see a, a rendering of a future um, bike park improvements um, you can see the center gray area is the proposed asphalt pump track that's funded uh, in this year's capital budget from uh, a portion of that from Park Development Fund and a portion from a Dane County grant uh, that the Capital Off-Road Pathfinder secured. Um, we're hopeful to start construction on that later this fall. There'll be more to come on that project in terms of uh, award of bid and, and things of that nature that'll come to council at a later date. I always get questions about what an asphalt pump track is. Um, that photo on the right is, is the recently constructed asphalt pump track at Aldo Leopold Park in the city of Madison. Um, these have become extremely popular. They've replaced um, the conventional dirt uh, pump tracks because of long-term maintenance that the, the dirt versions require. Um, one of the knocks on our current mountain bike course at Pleasant View is that it, it's a not beginner friendly course. And so the asphalt pump track and some of what we have planned here with skills loop and some beginner trail is to really try and add more of a, a novice or beginner component to the overall bike park. If you wanna move ahead, Bill. So what is phase two? Um, there's a lot of components of phase two and I think you'll see phase two broken into A, B, maybe even C. Um, but there, 
clearing and grading of the cross country ski trails. Most of it's relatively flat, ready to go. Some of it's gonna require some additional grading, possibly even some tree clearing. That's the responsibility of CXC. Uh, permanent snowmaking infrastructure with, with solar lights is also a, a CXC responsibility. Um, miles of paved recreational trail. So a portion of the cross country ski trail is to be paved in asphalt. That's a combination of two things. Um, primarily in the summer months for um, the wheeled cross-country ski training that um, cross-country ski skiers do, but also um, from a recreational amenity standpoint of, of paving that trail, which will connect to our trail system. Uh, mountain bike trailhead, uh, I mentioned earlier the novice and beginner riders uh, building trail for them as well as the paved pump track, skills <coughs> course, and then um, as we talked about, increased parking capacity. Um, CXC continues to fundraise. Um, they have funding in place for the next portion of their project, which, uh, which is a stormwater and site grading. Some of you will remember that the city uh, approved a engineering services agreement with Wiser Engineering back in February um, to develop an overall stormwater plan for the site and, and the design for um, the trail as well as the parking lot. Um, you can kind of see a, a fingers crossed timeline of what we're looking at for phase two, provided all goes well. Um, the first component is the stormwater and site grading. The stormwater needs to be put in before we um, start construction on any of the other elements, including the parking lot or the asphalt pump track. Um, you can see the responsibilities kind of laid out. And this is if the amendment is approved. Again, currently the city's obligation is the paved trail. Um, both CXC and city feel that the best use of the city's funds committed to the project uh, is the parking lot and increasing the capacity of the parking lot at the site to better serve um, not only the mountain bike users, but uh, the cross country skiers in the winter as well. I think that's the last slide. Um, happy to answer any questions or clarify anything that I went over. Thank you, man. Are there any questions from finance committee members? Um, I'm assuming that Yuri will be handling all the events and what happens out there, but I was just wondering if you have any sense of if you've heard any coming this next winter yet, or is there something? I know that he's continually working on events. A lot of them are, a lot of the larger events are booked out multiple years in advance, and I know that he needs, he, for him to feel comfortable in hosting the larger events, he needs the, uh, the infrastructure, the high capacity well, his permanent snowmaking equipment, and then obviously the parking is, is our biggest concern moving forward. But um, for those that don't know, Yuri has ran the events in Cable, Wisconsin. He's part of the team that puts on a lot of these cross country ski events, not just in Wisconsin, but across the Midwest, um, and has been the driving force in um, the car cross country ski program at Elver Park with the city of Madison the last few years and he's transitioning that operation and did transition that operation last year from Elver Park to uh, the Erdman site. He also last Thursday night held a really um, nice event uh, to kind of thank the donors from phase one and kind of update them on progress and I, I know the mayor was able to attend that event. I was there as well um, and it was great to see everybody excited and um, kind of everybody's work over the last four or five years paying off. Yeah, you should go and see it. There's a lot of progress. It looks nice. I, I have a question about the as asphalt pump track. So that is the city's responsibility. Correct. correct. All the mountain bike components are a city's responsibility. Um, and we have worked really closely with our friends at the Capital Off-Road Pathfinders who do are an amazing volunteer organization and have done a lot of, of good and, and benevolent work, not just in Middleton, but throughout Dane County. And then um, we have a contract in place with uh, the International Mountain Biking Association has a design component called Trail Solutions. And their lead designer is actually a UW-Madison grad and a Cambridge native. Um, and has they, they are working to bring the plans for the pump track to bid. That'll happen. Um, it will likely take the, the plans on July 18th to PRFC to authorize that project going to bid. 
And is that is that a facility? This is my um, showing my ignorance of mountain biking. Is that something that would be usable in the winter time or? A absolutely. Um, I know the Madison site was used heavily last winter, almost too heavily, as they've had some challenges this spring in in vegetation and landscape. Um, something that our designers did the one in Madison and they're learning from and, and have plans in place to address some of those concerns, but they are facilities that are able to be used in the winter months. And again, um, as I've learned more about the, the, the cross connection between cross country skiing and mountain biking, these are very compatible uses at these type of facilities throughout the country and are almost um, paired together in, in these other locations. Thank you, Matt. Any, oh, go ahead. In case, uh, Alder Rowe, if you would like, besides a tour in winter, uh, my husband does mountain biking all through the year. And so he has the fat tires for the winter uh, sports and he goes to the cable events and he goes to three or four a year. So bravo to be bringing in such expertise. And uh, if you ever want to see them, our, our, our uh, garage is full of bikes. Okay. Have a personal I, tour. I also know Yuri has a standing invitation to any of the council members who want to come cross country ski in the winter to just let him know, and he's more than happy to take people out. Me, I'm in. All right, okay. thanks. Great, thank you so much, Matt. And we'll be talking later about your uh, resolution. Um, okay, moving on then from presentations to the resolutions. The first item is resolution 2022 34 to support a bipartisan infrastructure bill, um, supplemental transportation alternative program, TAP application. That's a mouthful. Um, can I get a motion to accept the resolution? Ramsey will move. This is Emily, I'll second. All right, any discussion? I have a question, how much was the grant for? Yeah, uh, information, uh, the total amount, total cost of $40,000. The total cost for the study is $40,000. It'd be $8,000 match from the city and the grant request is $32,000. So there would be an $8,000. Yep. Yep. $8,000 city cost share. Okay. Any other questions for discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of approving resolution 2022-34 to support a bill supplemental TAP application. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Moving on to resolution 2022-35, amending the 2022 stormwater utility budget to include additional costs for drainage way repair projects. Can I get a motion to approve Both this? of approval. Thank you. And a second? I'll second it. Um, discussion. I will mention that I did share some um, feedback. I, I shared some comments just on little technical things, um, typos and what have you. Bill, did that get corrected in the final version? Yeah, in the final version for signature, those are corrected. Okay, great. All right, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of resolution, of passing resolution 2022-35, amending the 2022 stormwater utility budget to include additional costs for drainage way repair projects, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution is approved. Moving on to agreements. We have several. Agreement number one is with TRC Environmental for Phase Two Environmental Site Assessment of 2610 Parmenter Street. Would anyone like to move approval? Ramsey will. Thank you. And a second? Make that motion. Thank you. Any discussion? This is TIF funds, right, Bill? That, that's correct, TIF 5. Subject to city attorney approval. Subject oh. to city attorney approval. Great. Okay, good so, to know. Lisa. Yes. Uh, Abby, did you find anything in phase one? Uh, 
There were not any findings within the phase one environmental assessment that necessitated doing a phase two, but a phase one is primarily looking at historical uses on the site data and um, there is a tour of the facility where they open cabinets, they look at historical records and documents, but it does not include any analysis of the soil. And the phase one did find two recognized environmental uh, conditions, recognized environmental conditions, RECs. One was related to historical uses on the site that included auto repairs, including transmission and painting, used car sales, motorcycle maintenance and sales. And then the second was related to historical uses on the adjoining property to the north that had those same types of land uses. And um, our staff team met and discussed whether you know, we should proceed with the phase two. And uh, we are recommending that it is in the city's best interest to go ahead and incur the cost to do the phase two um, we are going to be building in enough time um, from for the agreement to acquire the property to make sure that we have the results of the phase two before uh, the closing date on the property. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I think with the uses that there have been, the historical uses that there have been, that's a very good recommendation. It's right. a good idea. And I believe that that background information on what was found in phase one is in the document. Okay, thank you. you. Um, I just had a quick question, Abby, and that is um, I noticed that one of the actions is for TRC um, to include interpretation of results and recommendations if requested. Is that something that we typically do request to get their, their recommendations? We typically do, yeah. Um, when they complete one of these environmental analysis for the city, and we've done a couple with them recently for properties that we're acquiring, we do meet with them um, following the release of the draft report and go over any recommendations that they have for the property. Um, they've been in close consultation with the city throughout the phase one as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further discussion or questions? All right, if not, then all those in favor of the motion to approve the agreement with TRC Environmental for Phase 2 Environmental Site Assessment of 2610 Parmenter Street, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the agreement is approved. Moving on to, this one comes to us from Tourism, um, the agreement with, is it Belter? Thank you. Belter and Lincoln for redesign of the Visit Middleton website. I'll move approval, uh, not to exceed $63,090. And Larry, I believe you finished your review of this. And one of the th things was on page eight of the memo of agreement to include addresses under notices. And one other small typo we found was page four under billing practices. There was a VT and it should be VM for Mi Visit Middleton. So those were the only two things. I'll move approval with those changes. I'll second that. Okay, great. So we have a motion uh, to uh, approve the agreement not to exceed, what was the amount again, $63,900? $90. $90, thank you. And with minor corrections, yep. Bill, I had shared my edits with you, so mm -hmm. we've got the clean yep. version yep. Yep. ready. Okay, great, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The agreement is approved. Elisa, well, can I just ask, were oh. your edits shared with tourism also? They were the same edits that, <laughs> that okay. you mentioned, okay. the addresses not being referenced, okay. and then the v, VT instead of yeah. VM. Yeah, it's kind of eerie that they were exactly the same. Um, Okay, so next up is the grant agreement with Dane County for North Mendota Trail East segment. And this has come to us from us and from council. So this is pretty exciting that we're, we're finally closing the loop, I think. And I did, I shared some edits uh, with Bill, who I think has incorporated those into the final version. Uh, just can you refresh my memory on, on what the edits were on, on this item? Oh, actually, my apologies. It was not an edit. Well, I do have some minor changes. 
Okay. I didn't. I asked you questions when we met, but I didn't share edits because I found these later. Um, first, let me get a motion to approve this. I'm zero move to approve. This is Emily. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? Ryan, we had a conversation earlier today. Um, yeah. uh, just again to make this subject a final city attorney uh, sign off. My motion will reflect that. And for those who don't know, it was uh, section six, paragraph B. Correct. And it was um, just some question that came from the county as to if they decided not to appropriate the funds. So I wanted to get a legal opinion on whether or not that should be in there. Yep. And, I, and I've asked the county for that clarification question and haven't gotten a response quite yet. So. Thank you. Um, I'll just comment. I had the same, a similar question for Bill. My question wasn't so much that the language be in there because I, I do understand why it's in there. But my question was, do we have the million dollars um, available? Have, have they appropriated it? And I think we're... Get a thumbs that's, up. That's my understanding that it is in their budget. Yes. Okay. They Good. approved it and it pays when we're done. Yeah. Right. Um, I had a minor correction on page five, numbered page five. If you're looking at the PDF, it might be different. Um, item 12, it should say sponsor is responsible for obtaining and complying. Also, just a question, I guess I'm going to assume that we have the um, insurance that is specified. This two is on number page five, I believe. Oh, it's 16. Thank yeah. you. It's on. Oh, that is numbered five. You do have there are two numbered five. <laughs> okay. So we have two pages with number five at the bottom. That explains. So the numbering might need to be fixed. Um, but yeah, we do have the insurance in yes. item 16. Yep. Okay, I didn't know if we had the insurance or got a waiver. And then finally, item 24, something's wrong with this paragraph. Something's missing. It says the entire agreement of the parties is contained herein and in schedule A of this agreement supersedes any and all oral arguments and so forth. So something is, um, and in before schedule A is, capital I so I'm thinking maybe there is something that should be in that first line so perhaps this one can be approved pending city attorney approval. city attorney approval yep, that's my motion okay <clears throat> all right so any further discussion or questions now in this case the completion date is December 31st 2023, but uh, we are not going to wait until then. So our plan is to get it done now. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. All those in favor of approving the grant agreement with Dane County for North Mendota Trail East segment pending city attorney approval signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The grant agreement is approved. Moving on to item number four. This is the amendment to agreement number two with Burse Surveying and Engineering Inc. for inspection and construction engineering services for Stonefield Meadows Railroad Greenway Boulevard drainageway repair. Um, referred to us by the Storm Water Utility Board. May I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Thank you, and a second? Second. All right, any discussion? So, Sean, I have a question for you that we have been working on this uh, stone field for a while. So, what's, uh, I thought we had all the ducks in order. So, what's happening here now? Uh, our, our own crew is doing some work on the stone field ditch that's downstream of Stonefield Road. But the railroad ditch that's further upstream that goes along the backyards along Woodgate Road uh, in the rail corridor is taking a lot of coordination with a buried fiber optic line uh, from Muffin, if you remember Muffin. Uh, they buried their cable someplace other than they had it been permitted to and at a depth less than was uh, required. And so that's taking a lot of extra coordination in addition to dealing with the railroad, uh, you know. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, any further questions or discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of the amendment to agreement number two with Burr Surveying and Engineering Inc. for inspection and construction engineering services for Stonefield Meadows Railroad Greenway Boulevard drainage way repair signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the amendment is approved. Item five, agreement with Middleton Outreach Ministry for use of American Rescue Plan Act funds. This one too has come back a couple times. Um, I'm going to make a motion to approve it. Uh, can I get a second? Ramsey, a second. Thank you. Any discussion? I just want to say I really appreciate the cleaning up of the uh, document and uh, adding the budget. It was really helpful to see that the full $60,000 in is intended not for um, staff compensation, but for direct assistance to mom clients. I'm, I'm pleased to see that. Um, I'm not sure if it matters, but section C on equal benefits still refers to consultant instead of subrecipient, which is the term used elsewhere. Um, but that was the only, uh, only problem I saw, and I'm okay with approving it as is. If our city attorney thinks that change doesn't need to be made. No, the title is kind of messed up too, but it's easily fixed. Our American, it's not a word, the first word in the, in the document. But. I didn't even notice that, good catch. Okay, so, but we don't need to, we can live with this, correct? No big deal. All right, so any further discussion or questions? <clears throat> if not, all those in favor of approving the agreement with Middleton Outreach Ministry for use of American Rescue Act, Rescue Plan Act funds, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the agreement is approved. Last of our agreements is the First Amendment to lease between Central Cross Country Ski Association and City of Middleton, referred to us by Parks, Recreation, and Forestry. Uh, can I get a motion to this approve? This is Olson. I'll move approval. Thank you. Second. This is Emily. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Matt, you just want to give us a, a brief description of how this changes our responsibility? Absolutely. Thank so um, <clears throat> the overall, um, the, the important thing to note overall is there were in 2018, there was $420,000 allocated to the city's support of this endeavor. Um, the agreement states that when those funds are used, that CXC is responsible for the major the anything remaining that was the city's responsibility in terms of this amendment changes that agreement from the paved trail on the Erdman property to the additional parking lot. And we, we had $272,000 at the start of this year remaining of that original 420. Uh, the Wiser engineering agreement was 49,400. So that remaining amount, the 272 minus the 49.4 would give us what remains for the parking lot. If we receive the bids, and the bid amount for the parking lot work exceeds the city's available funds. This amendment requires that CXC provide um, proof to the city that it has those funds or deposit, I forget the exact legal language, but they have to appease Larry and Matt in ensuring that they have the funds for us to complete the work. So Matt, how big, how much is the difference between the bid and the funds available? We don't know yet, Mayor. Um, oh, okay. They're working to finish up um, the bid documents. They just submitted the plans to the city for review today. Okay. So um, we're getting close to putting it out to bid, but it's going to be a little bit while okay. before we know. Okay, thank you. Matt, can you say that again? We're taking, we're moving some of the funds to make sure that we cover the cost of the parking lot and they're absorbing what trails or multi-use trails? Yeah, so are we're taking on the responsibility of the parking lot as we've deemed that a, a now concern, whereas the trail development can wait. If we, if we pave the trail now or a year from now, <clears throat> we'll be okay, but we need additional parking before this winter. But that actually buys more time for CXC to, we don't have a deadline on when that has to be done though. Correct, correct. Brian, can you scroll up earlier in the document, please? Thank you. I just want to see. Wait. Wait. 
<laughs> I'm looking for recreational facility at the bottom of the first page. And the, the recreational facility refers to the proposed um, facility that CXC is fundraising for and, and hopes to build in the future. Mm -hmm. And that will um, have to go through the city's review process, um, plan commission. It'll have to go to PRFC, plan commission um, for approval, just like any public facility that's constructed on city property. Okay. I just noted there are two, two, again, grammatical problems with this paragraph in the middle. It says, at any time after completion of the driveway and initial 15-space parking lot, the stormwater facilities, period. CXC may commence construction of the recreational facility. It seems like there's... I think there's a missing and yeah, in front a, of the stormwater that, facilities. Yeah, well, and it sounds like it's saying they can commence construction after these, the driveway, the parking lot, and the stormwater facilities are are done. Right. Yeah, we, we, we did flag this for Matt Fleming, who drafted the documents. I think we're waiting to hear back from Matt. Okay. So we can do this one subject to city attorney approval as well. Okay, great. Yeah, and then at the end of this paragraph, it, it just ends with the word under. So, so this one, too, is... approval okay and I really hope that the um, construction of the um, parking lot is going to build in sustainability measures like fire retention and things like that just my yeah the stormwater all, all of that has to be accounted for and meet the Dane County requirements I think this is the right thing to do because last year there were a lot of people who were skiing and they were parking all along there. So, so I think this is really needed. So this will help out. Okay. All right. All those in favor of <coughs> approving the First Amendment. Oh, wait. I should ask any further discussion or questions. Okay. All in favor of approving First Amendment to lease between Central Cross Country Ski Association and City of Middleton pending city attorney approval signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The ayes have it. Moving on to bids and quotes. The first one is award of bid to Badgerland Excavating Corp for North Mendota Trail East Segment Construction, uh, referred to us by Ped Bike and Transit and ourselves and council. <laughs> so, um, that's what it looks like. Anyway, uh, we're considering this one again, right? Because we did not have the funding in place the first time. And now we do with the, yeah, now we have the, agreement with yeah, with the grant agreement. Okay, can I get a motion? Ramsey will move approval. Does Emily all second? Thank you. Any discussion? So maybe this is for Mark. So, would this include the west part behind the homes, or would that be separate? Mayor, you're referring to the segment between CVS, uh, the Goodwill store, and Brand Street. Yep. That will be separate. That will be a change order for this for this uh, contract. So, would this guy be doing this, or somebody else, or would that be it, happening? It would be a change order with the paving contractor used for this contract. Okay. I emailed about that a couple of weeks ago. I can resend that to you if you'd like. It, okay. Because we originally thought we would maybe do a change order to with T2, but that unit cost came back quite expensive, much more than what this bid. That unit price came back a lot more than what Badgerland's quote came back for, so we thought we would do a change order with Badgerland as opposed to T2. Excellent. Thank you. But I don't know what that amount will be yet. We haven't requested that yet. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, any further questions or discussion? If not, then all those in favor of the motion to award bid to Badgerland Excavating Corp for North Mendota Trail East segment construction signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the, the award is approved. The second one is award of bid to Nelson Excavating and Son LLC for Stonefield Meadows Railroad Greenway Boulevard Drainage Way Repair. Can I get a motion? Emily, I'll make that motion. All right, I'll second it. Any discussion? Well, it's about time we got it done. So <laughs> this has been hanging around for a long time. So. 
Um, I thought it was very interesting, the difference between two bids and the lowest bid. I'm glad you followed up with, the, um, with Nelson to make sure that, that that was accurate. And if you all don't have concerns about that, I don't either, so I, I can support this. Any further discussion? All right, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the, the award is approved. Moving on to miscellaneous. First, we have an ordinance to amend mobile food cart permit fees. Olson, I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. I will second that. Any discussion or um, explanation as to why? I guess, go ahead, thank you. Um, I'm really happy to see this. Um, I know in the pandemic, more people are going out to eat and staying outside uh but the mobile food truck was part of the, one of the reasons i ran for office it just seemed very pricey for especially small businesses trying to get started and i understand that we have a good healthy restaurant business downtown and i want to support them too so i plan to go to both yeah i think that's the right thing to do so the other fees compared to Madison were simply outrageous so Okay, any further discussion? If not, all those um, in favor, I guess we're referring this to, to council, but all those in favor of approving an ordinance to amend mobile food cart permit fees, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion is approved. Next, we have an update on the 2022 assessment revaluation. Bill? And I'll, I'll cover this. Uh, no action required. This is just an update. Uh, we have some information in the packet provided by the city's assessor, uh, Dean Peters, with associated appraisal. Um, and just to give a, a little bit of information and background, uh, as uh, some of you will recall, uh, the council had authorized doing a full revaluation of all property in the city this year. Uh, the last revaluation was done for the 2018 assessment year. Uh, that was done by the former city assessor, Paul Musser. So this would be the first revaluation that's being conducted by Associated Appraisal. Uh, they're doing a market update revaluation, which means they're reviewing um, all of the um, database property records and updating their models. Uh, they are not doing a physical inspection of every property in the city. Um, they are, each year will assess new construction or if there's items where there are changes. Uh, and that's what they're doing as well this year, but also updating their model. Uh, reason why we're doing the revaluation are the changes that we've seen in the market over the last four years. Uh, the state requires our assessment ratio, a comparison of our assessed values overall to market, to be within 10% at least once every four years. For the last year, we were at 85%, so we'd already dropped below that 90% threshold. Uh, would be significantly out of compliance with that this year based on the changes in the market during this year. Uh, so the council had authorized and, and went forward with Associated to do that revaluation. Uh, they've been working on putting that information together and are very close to having it finalized and sending assessment notices. Uh, currently they're planning on sending notices next week. Um, overall, as indicated in the, uh, the letter in the packet from the assessor, uh, they're looking at an average increase overall of 26 percent uh, so a large change based on what we've seen from the market uh, one thing that we want to emphasize and, and uh, dean peters the assessor wanted to emphasize is a 26 percent increase in assessments does not mean a 26 percent increase in taxes when they look at the assessments they're looking at what is the current property value that sets the 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 base level when we calculate the tax rates, we look at the total amount that we're collecting, we divide that by the base and get the mill rate. So as assessments go up, the amount that we collect um, in taxes as a city is limited by state levy limits. So we will have a certain <coughs> amount that we're authorized to levy. You're dividing that by a larger base and you would expect mill rates to go down. So the important thing that we wanna get out and, and message that we'll be sending with the notices is, uh, the amount of your assessment increase, don't, don't take that percentage and assume your taxes are gonna go up by that amount. Assessments are going up, tax rates are going down. And how much an individual's property taxes um, change will depend both on the budget set by the city, school, county, MATC, and how much is collected, and also how much their individual property assessment changes compared to the average. 
In general, if properties are assessments went up by more than the average of 26%, they could expect that their portion of the tax bill is gonna go up by some amount. Likewise, if their uh, assessment increase went up less than the average, all else being equal, you'd expect that their portion of the taxes would go down somewhat. Unfortunately, we don't have exact numbers yet, and we won't until November when all the budgets are finalized and we're able to set the tax rates. Um, but it's just important for people to keep in mind that this is just looking at the value of the property. Um, we're kind of looking at all properties in the city. Um, we're expecting um, large increases based on what's in the market, but that's just the assessed value, not, not what an individual's taxes would be. Um, a couple other updates. Um, those notices will be mailed out next week, as I indicated. Uh, there will then be a period of open book when the assessor is available to meet with people that have questions either about their individual assessment or about the process. Um, open book dates are going to start on July 12th. Uh, they're planned several dates, some in person, some um, via phone or virtually. Uh, final date that's scheduled is July 27th. I think there's five or six dates currently scheduled in total, and the assessor said if there's more interest, um, he will meet with people other times. They'll add additional dates as needed based on the level of demand. And then after um, open book, then there is a board of review where someone meets with the assessor, they aren't able to, to resolve things and they want to file a challenge. Uh, they can challenge the assessment with the board of review, and the board of review, review date is planned for August 17th at 9 a.m., and that would be located here at the city council chambers. Be happy to answer any questions, or if there's anything I can't answer, I'd be happy to relay any information to the uh, city assessor and follow up with him as well. Any questions or comments? So, Bill, how does it relate to the equalized value? That will go over $5 billion for Middleton then? Or not? Uh, not necessarily. So, so um, this, this revaluation will affect the assessed value. Um, equalized value is a number that's determined by the state of Wisconsin each year. And they take a sampling of sales each year, and they try to determine what the full value, what they call equalized value, would be for the city. So we expect that to go up each year um, as values increase and as there's new construction. Um, but the equalized value that we had as of January 1, uh, 2021, that is their best estimate of what the current fair market value of the city as a whole as of that date was. So I wouldn't expect a large swing in equalized value, probably more the, the normal increases we've seen year to year. We will see a larger increase in assessed value because we're taking values that were set January 1st of 2018 and updating them for the market as of January 1, 2022. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, I had a question, Bill. So the revaluation that's going on now, is that for all property in Middleton, including commercial property? Yes. Okay, yeah, and are property. the rates, is this 26% overall? Yeah, this is an average overall. Um, in general, uh, they're seeing larger increases in the market for residential as a class of property compared to commercial, but there'll be variances within individual properties depending on the type of commercial, the type of residential location, all of those factors. All right, great. <clears throat> so a certain class of residential, if the value goes up, could see um, could see an increase depending on, I mean, they're, they are potentially gonna be winners and losers because yeah. not everything is gonna be equal across the board. So you, right. could, you could almost, with the assessor's figures, you could almost extrapolate what segment of that market would increase, couldn't you? Yeah, so as, as notices go out, um, if people look at what their assessment increase was compared to the average, that'll give them an idea of if they have a larger piece or a smaller piece of the total tax buy. So if the average is 26% and there's an individual property that goes up, say, 35%, they would expect that, that all else being equal, their tax bill would likely be going up. Likewise, if there's a certain property or class that increases by less than 26%, if all else equal, you would expect things to go down. Now, whether or not an individual bill goes up or down and by how much will also depend on how much is levied and when the budgets are set. Um, but anytime you do a revaluation, there'll be changes in which properties are going up more or less compared to the average, and that'll affect their, their piece of the tax pie. 
And part of why a revaluation is done um, on a, a regular basis is to try to have that equity and fairness in the market that if you have certain properties that are growing in value faster than others, the way the property taxes are structured, they should be paying a larger portion of the, the property tax burden. Bill, using the example you gave where if the average is 26 and someone's went up to 35 percent, would it be, would you be expecting a 9 percent increase in your property taxes then, the difference not, between the two? Not, not necessarily because that, that's one piece of the puzzle. The other is you need to look at what the budgets yeah. are and how much is collected. I know school district is looking at a, a referendum, potentially the county. So there are other things going on that will affect the amount of taxes. So it's not as simple as just saying it's a 9% increase. But uh, yeah, I think the best we can say at this point is if the ass assessment is going up higher than the average, that would tend to increase the amount of taxes. And then once the budgets are set and we know the amount being collected, then we'll be able to get more specific numbers. Yeah, I have to wait for the other shoe to fall and find out. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, and as he said, there are a couple shoes <laughs> that need to drop. The, uh, the county referendum, the school district referendum, and, and then ours if we go forward with that. So this is gonna be, we're changing a lot of variables um, at this uh, related to property taxes, and it'll be interesting to see how we can help residents understand what led to the increase. Mm -hmm. Not sure it'll make a difference, but um, okay. Any further discussions or questions? I think I just want to say that property tax increases are always difficult. So it's just going to be something we will all hear about. And uh, it is what it is. But um, properties nationwide have gone up substantially. So it's not surprising. But um, it is hard when families are trying to make ends meet and our workforce housing, it's getting less and less available. Um, and like you said, uh, Alder Hanairo, the tax referendums coming in the fall, we should really get out there and start communicating, I think, uh, that these things are coming. Otherwise, they will be very surprised to be hit with, with one increase and then referendums on top of it. Yep. Well, and that's actually a good segue um, to the next item, last item on our agenda and that is the 2023 budget development calendar. Um, I assume yeah, we can, I can move on. We I didn't can. have to take action on. Well, yeah, there's no, no yeah, action so required Bill, on that last back, item. Back I to can. you to walk us through the calendar. Yeah, so, so each year um, before we start the budget process, we like to put together um, a tentative schedule um, of, of overview of the process and the dates and just get feedback from both the finance committee and council. Uh, this schedule is largely based on, on the process that we've been using the last couple of years. Um, looking at the dates, it starts with tonight with looking at the budget schedule. Uh, we'd be planning to do a budget kickoff um, on the 19th, um, hopefully starting finance committee a little early that night as, as well like we did tonight. Um, and at that budget kickoff, we'd be giving a presentation uh, with information on kind of the, the context of what we're expecting for net new construction, equalized value, uh, kind of looking at the big picture of our budget and what our projections are going forward. And then asking for feedback and direction from the finance committee and council that the staff and the department heads can be used as they're formulating their budget requests. Uh, we would then follow that with a meeting with the department heads uh, and department managers to provide the budget instructions and any feedback from the council. Departments would have um, about a month to put together their budgets uh, with their budgets uh, tentatively being due on August 19th. Uh, we do have a date listed in the calendar here of August 16th for a possible finance committee and council discussion about a referendum. Uh, I think that there'll need to be discussions about whether or not we're proceeding with a referendum, and if so, what's included in dollar amount earlier than that, starting that discussion in July. Um, August 16th is in here as a date because that is practically the date that the council would likely need to act if they want to proceed with a referendum this fall. Uh, because we can't set the final referendum question until we have our um, actual net new construction number from the state so we know how much our levy is allowed to grow. We'll get that around August 1st. 
and we have to have action by the end of August in order to provide enough notice for the ballots to be prepared and, and to, to in county. So that really targets the middle of August that a decision needs to be made on yes or no, we're proceeding with a referendum and what the specific re uh, referendum wording would be. Um, assuming there is this, uh, a plan to proceed with a referendum, uh, what we're anticipating for the budget is that we would be developing two different budget scenarios or options, one assuming a referendum passage, uh, one assuming that it doesn't pass, uh, because with the referendum date not being until November, that is at the very end of our process and we'll need to have two, two different scenarios. That's not really very much different than prior years where we've often had two or sometimes three different budget scenarios that we've presented to the Finance Committee. And then typically the Finance Committee has picked one as a starting point and then you worked off that to make adjustments. So I think that could work very similar if you would like this year. Um, other dates um, coming up, uh, as we get into September, uh, we tentatively identified September 15th and 29th as Finance Committee budget work sessions. I believe those are both Thursdays. Uh, we were suggesting that, trying to avoid um, nights that there are other committee meetings, and we have several different committees that meet variously on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Uh, if anyone knows of conflicts with any of these dates, if you can let us know, uh, we can search and find other dates um, in that month that could work. I'm free. Okay, thank you. Uh, the rest of the process from there in October, uh, we would be uh, asking authorization from Finance Committee and Council to proceed with publishing the public hearing notice uh, for the newspaper. Uh, if that's acted on on October 4th, we'd be publishing on October 13th. Then there's a three to four month delay while we are waiting for the notice to be published in the newspaper. There's a 15 day uh, period and then we can schedule the public hearing. Um, the schedule we have laid out here assumes that if we were going to referendum, we would probably wanna wait to hold that public hearing and deliberations after the results of the referendum are known so that any final adjustments can be made based on that outcome. So the date is tentatively planned for November 10th for a special council meeting for the budget public hearing and deliberations. And then that would allow final action on the budget at the regular council meeting on November 15th. Uh, as at this point, um, looking for any questions or feedback or direction, concern about dates. Um, and you know, if there are things that need to change, this is just a tentative schedule, but at least wanted to start getting this out here so people can be planning for those dates as we go forward. Any questions or comments for Bill? I just had a question about um, the time interval between the um, budget public hearing and the approval of the budget at our regular council meeting. Is the two business days sufficient, you think, to <coughs> address public feedback that we might get at that um. hearing? Yeah, that, that timeline is a little tight and, and normally we'd build in a few extra days um, in there. Uh, the reason it's tight was um, to trying to wait until after the, the referendum results are known. Um, so at least we'd have the 9th to gather that information and then have the meeting on the 10th. I think it's, it's possible unless there are significant amount of changes um, that would come out of the public hearing. And if that's the case, um, the adoption of the budget date could be pushed back if needed. We could have a special council meeting if we're not ready to act on the 15th. And then also if, if the decision is made in August not to go forward with a referendum, then we, we don't have to wait until after election day. Right. We, we, yeah, we, we could move that, that um, special council meeting up um, if that's the case. We'd still have to allow the adequate time for the public hearing notice, but that'd give us a little bit more flexibility on the timing for that meeting. And what is the minimum required public hearing notice for this particular type of meeting? Uh, it's 15 days from the date of publication, which would, if, according to the schedule, public hearing um, would be, or the publication date would be October 13th, so the earliest date for the public hearing would be October 28th. So that you could schedule it um, that very end of October or first few days of November. I, I like being able to give more than the required 15 days, so I mm -hmm. appreciate that the way it's structured right now, you've built that in to be mm -hmm. more advanced notice. Any further questions? All right. Well, on that note, um, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank I'll you. I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion? 
If not, those in favor of the motion to adjourn signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. This thing is